Now there is always this perpetual war that goes on between books and movies. Most people prefer movies, while a few people like me and obviously like you who prefer watching this video over a lot of movie related content on YouTube prefer books. Almost every month the number of books that I read always exceeds the number of movies that I've watched and I'm kind of proud of that statistic. In this video I have something which is both book related and movie related. In this video I'm going to be talking to you about 8 books to movie adaptation books that I read in 2018. Now before I start talking to you about the 8 books that I read and which were ultimately adopted into movies, I want to tell you two things. First, these are essentially not books that were published in 2018. These were the books that I read in 2018. And second, I also have a lot of classics on my list but I'm gonna exclude those classics because most of the classics have been turned into movies and I'm thinking of making a separate video of all the classics that I read in 2018. So that content is for another video because it'll be too long if I include those books also in this video. Now while I'm talking to you about these books, you have to understand that I'm not talking to you about these books in a particular order of preference these books are just random most of my videos are in order of my preference but this video is not so these are just that the books that i read and in no particular order book number one which was my absolute favorite i watched the movie also and i obviously loved the book this was the martian by andy weir it was published in 2011 this book tells us the story of this guy called mark watney who's left stranded on mars so he along with five of his other astronauts go on to this mission on mars and when they are there due to some unfortunate circumstance and a really high velocity storm they have to immediately exit the surface and atmosphere of mars now because the time is limited and because there's a lot of confusion it so happens that an unfortunate incident occurs and the rest of the crew they just presume that mark is dead now mark wakes up the next day and finds that he's stranded on mars he's left alone on mars and he is in a fix because his oxygen will last only so many days, his food will last only so many days, his life support system will last only so many days and also he has no communication with earth. So it is this peculiar and highly troublesome situation that Marx finds himself and this book is the story of Mark Watney and his unplanned, unwarranted and absolutely terrific stay in mass. Now this book The Martian was turned into a movie in 2015 which was directed by a director called Riley Scott and the main guy, the main character of Mark Watney was played by none other than Matt Damon. Now Matt Damon is an extraordinary actor and I absolutely loved his work in this movie. So guys if you have not watched the movie or read the book I suggest you do both because obviously you will love it. The next book that I read which was later adapted into a movie is called The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. Now John Boyne wrote this novel in 2006 and it is said that when he wrote the first draft, he did it in just two and a half days, never stopping to sleep, never stopping for anything else, which is just fantastic because if you think it is such a short time and he wrote a wonderful novel. Now this book is a historical fiction which is based in the World War II era during the time of the Nazis. So it is the year 1942. And and the book takes us to the Berlin of 1942. There is this young boy called Bruno who is just a small young boy of I think age 9 to 10. I'm not very sure. But yeah, he's just a small young boy who one day comes back from school and finds out that all his luggage, all his belonging and the entire belonging of the house have been packed. Now when he inquires uh, about it to his mother, he's told that they are shifting. He doesn't like the idea because he's fond of his friends, he has great company and he likes to play with all these boys. And when they finally move to this another place, he discovers that there is absolutely no one to talk to, to play with and he's kind of desolate and he feels alone and he doesn't like it one bit in that place. He observes one particular thing which strikes him as something very different, something very peculiar, something very weird. So there is this tall friend which is visible from his house and as far as the eye can see, the tall fence runs and when he observes the land beyond the fence from his window he 
finds all the people to be really weird he finds the people to be very different and the entire setting of the place very different so what he does he tries to walk through the length of the fence and uh, one day he meets this guy who's very different from him now this chance encounter leads to a beautiful friendship which one day will turn devastating which one day will turn unfortunate for bruno now as you must have understood the place where bruno goes to live is actually a nazi concentration camp and the boy that he meets the boy that he befriends is actually a jewish prisoner a jewish boy if you've been following me from some time you know that i'm an emotional reader and this book actually made me cry because it's so intense it's so emotional it's so dramatic and it's just a very very sad read coming to the movie i have not seen the movie this book was turned into a movie in 2008 and it was actually a british american historical drama fiction i really want to see the movie and i hope i will see it sometime soon but yeah if you have not yet read the book do check it out it's an absolutely amazing read The next book that I want to talk to you about is this one, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Now, I am on Bookstagram and I follow a lot of people who review good books, who, you know, come up with good book recommendations and this is one book that I saw on Bookstagram and I thought why not go for it. So, I'm really happy that I went for it because this was a really good read. So this book was actually published in February of 2017 and it did so well that it was actually featured on the New York Times young adult best selling list and it stayed there for 50 weeks which is like amazing. So Angie Thomas wanted to let out her fury, her anger after the shooting of this guy called Oscar Grant and she wrote this short story in college which she later expanded into this full-fledged novel. So the book tells us the story of this young girl called Star Carter who's just 16 years old. Now she lives in this poor neighborhood but she actually goes to school in a very rich posh white neighborhood and she's often torn between these two worlds because it is very rare that her two worlds collide she's kind of managing okay but one day her world is shattered when she witnesses the shooting of her best friend khalil by a police officer now khalil was an innocent he was unarmed but still the officer shot him and soon the incident made headlines some people started calling khalil a thug a drug dealer and what not but star was not okay with it she was there at the spot she saw the shooting and she knew that khalil was actually innocent and now it is upon star to bring out the truth in front of everybody to tell the truth to the public so what will she do will she get up to the challenge or will she try to balance her both worlds again this is for you to know when you read this book i think it's a brilliant book which talks about the current situation the current situation of blacks in america now this book was later turned into a movie which was directed by george tillman junior and it also featured film stars like amandla stenberg and regina hall I have not yet seen the film but I really want to trust me I want to. So this film received critical acclaim because people praised Amandla's performance in this movie and uh, it kind of did okay as against the budget of 23 million dollars it actually earned 32 million dollars. So you can say it was a mild success. The next book that I want to talk to you about is this one Haruki Murakami's Norwegian Wood. So I read this book because we had this bookish community and we decided that a particular month's book was Murakami's Norwegian Wood. So I picked it up and I absolutely loved it and uh, it was amazing. So this book was actually first written as a short story and then that short story which is called Firefly was adopted as the first part of the novel. This book was published in 1987. It's originally written in Japanese. So this guy writes in Japanese but he's so popular that his books have been translated into a lot of languages like a number of languages. Now when Haruki Murakami first wrote this book, he never expected the kind of fame that he got it kind of became like a phenomena in japan which he was very surprised and kind of not okay with now the book is set in the backdrop of the late 1960s during the period of the student revolution of japan now this is the backdrop but it's not the major theme of this book the major theme of this book is separation and pain and loss and a little bit of mental health also so it has a lot of themes norwegian wood tells us the story of this guy called toru watanabe who moves to tokyo after the death the tragic death of his best friend and he's really alone he's really sad because he loved his friend and because he wanted to get away from the place he shifts to tokyo where he 
becomes a student in a university now while he is living in tokyo he is still not happy because he is still the desolate kind of person who likes to stay alone and uh, he's kind of difficult with people he's a loner you can say now one fine day he meets this girl called naoko who was actually his best friend's girlfriend and somehow they bond over their best friend and their relationship starts to progress they kind of fall in love you cannot call it exactly uh, love but yes they kind of get into a relationship toru is passionately intensely in love with her but naoko is still caught in her past and she is still not able to get over the death of her boyfriend so their relationship falls apart and eventually toru meets this another girl called midori who is fierce who is independent who is the exact opposite of naoko she is so full of life but toru doesn't have the same kind of relationship the same kind of love that he had for naoko and this book is the story of this love triangle so there is this director called tran ang hang i really know that i am pronouncing it wrong but yeah this is the director's name who made this into a japanese romantic drama so this movie was released in a lot of countries russia japan uh, the united states the uk uh, canada but critics did not really like it and also it kind of fared averagely on the box office so i cannot say that the movie was a success i have not seen it so i can absolutely have no comments about it but yeah do check out the book this is one awesome book that you should definitely read next book that i'm going to talk to you about is this one the perks of being a wallflower by stephen chbosky this is one book that people have been telling me to read since so long like i've been a book reviewer for almost 6 years now like it'll be 6 years in april but this is one book that i had not read i just read it last year and i'm actually guilty as charged because how can i not read this book it's a kind of classic or a classic in the making you can call it so this book was first published in 1999 it is set in 1991 and you can imagine it's been 20 years since it has been published but it still remains so relevant and so contemporary that you know you have to read it to know so it's a coming of age novel which is written in this form called epistolary format which is actually nothing but a novel which is written in the form of documents so basically this book is actually written in the form of letters which charlie the main protagonist of this movie and the book sends to an unknown stranger so this is a coming of age novel which deals with a lot of issues which are relevant to today's youth as it was relevant to the youth of 1990s and uh, this is one book that you definitely have to read In the year 2012 Stephen Chbosky himself adapted and directed this movie which featured stars like Emma Watson, Ezra Miller and Logan Lerman. So it was released in 2012 and it actually earned 33.4 million dollars as compared to the budget of 13 million dollars. So you can imagine it was a great success. Now I've already seen the movie and I absolutely loved it as much as I loved the book. And uh, yeah, go and watch the movie and read the book. The next book that I want to talk to you about is a book that I picked up from my travel in Egypt. So I went to Egypt in February of 2018 and while I was there I decided to look into some Egyptian literature. So I did what people really do when they go to a different place and they have no idea about the literature there. So I asked the lady over there who was in charge of the book shop what are the books that she thinks i should read so she asked me how many books i really want to read and would i prefer fiction i said of course it has to be fiction so the first book the very first book that she gave me was this one uh i have given the copy to a friend so i don't have it to show you but yeah i will put the picture here so this book is the yakubian building by ala al aswani it has been said that this book is an absolute gem it gives you a different kind of insight into the egyptian society of the 1990s and i think it was a wonderful read as well so this book was first published in the year 2002 and in the year 2002 and 2003 it was actually the best selling arabic novel and finally it was in 2004 that an english translation was published and the book has been so popular that eventually it has been translated into 23 different languages so it was adapted into a movie in the year 2006 and in 2007 it was also adapted as a television mini series so i have a lot of information that i've shared with you and you can gauge from all this information how popular how brilliant this book is actually so this book is set in 1990 during the time of 
the first Gulf War and it gives us a very realistic, a very serious picture of the contemporary Egyptian society which changed drastically after the revolution that happened in 1952. An interesting trivia about this book and about myself. So this book is actually named after a building in Cairo, a building in downtown Cairo. I was there in downtown Cairo for one day. I was actually living in a hotel which was just on the next street where this building actually is so i thought i'll go there but you know something happened and then we had a flight we had to catch back the flight we were already late so it just happened that the last moment plan of visiting this place failed and i had started reading this book while i was in luxor so i was already into it and i was really curious about the building i wanted to see the building they say that the building is a little different from uh, how it is uh, at least described in the book but nevertheless because it is the titular building i really wanted to see it but i guess i will have to go to cairo another time to see it I think I've ranted like a lot so let me just get back to the story. So this book connects us to a lot of people who actually are connected by this one building. So it's a huge building, it has a lot of apartments and different kind of people, different kind of uh, uh, individuals live there, stay there, work there. And these characters which the story has are really interesting characters. So there is this very innocent guy who falls into the trap of fundamentalism and ruins his life. There is this tailor who is mischievous, who is cunning, shrewd and he keeps conceiving these plans of you know confiscating properties of others then there is this fading aristocrat who once belonged to a very prestigious family but now nobody really knows him nobody really bothers about him then there is this beautiful young woman who has to go out for work and when she does go out she realizes that work is not really work it is actually intended as favors physical favors for the boss and there is this guy who is very popular who is a newspaper editor extremely prestigious well revered but he is secretly a gay so there are a lot of interesting characters in this book and that is why i absolutely loved it the only thing that i did not like about this book was the climax which i think was kind of a buzzkill so this book was then turned into an egyptian movie in the year 2006 it premiered at the berlin film festival and then was later released in egypt it is said to be the highest budgeted movie of Egypt until now. So the next book that I want to talk to you about is Calling Sehmet by Harinder Sikka. So this is a book which I featured in my worst books of 2018 and that was because I saw the movie first and I read the book later. Now when I saw the movie I was absolutely amazed by it because overall the acting, the direction and everything else was just perfect. And I had the same kind of expectations with the book which unfortunately did not turn into reality. So I was left disappointed and that's the reason i featured it in my worst uh, books of 2018 so this book was first published in 2008 but it was published by this publisher called konak publishers and a revised edition was subsequently published by penguin random house in 2018 now coming to the story so it is the year 1971 and there are tensions which are brewing between the two countries of india and pakistan obviously we are at loggerheads and there is a war which is brewing there is this young kashmiri college going girl called sehmet whose father is actually a raw operator so he works for the raw and he transfers intelligence to raw so he has a lot of contacts in pakistan and that is how he's able to help raw now he is on the verge of death he suffers from a fatal disease which will soon kill him now his only wish is that his daughter his only daughter his only child will carry on the work that he is currently doing and will help save the nation that he so loves so Sehmet is immediately called to task and she being a loving daughter, a die-hard patriot decides to continue in the footsteps of her father. So there is a marriage which is soon arranged between Sehmet and the son of a Pakistani general who is actually very high in command in Pakistan. So Sehmet goes there after marriage and she becomes a part of the household. She starts listening to conversations, listening to all the talks that is going on and one day she comes across this very important piece of information which can actually decide the fate of this war which can actually make or break the Indian naval forces. So this is basically an espionage thriller which has a lot of drama and a little romance also but I would say you can skip the book and rather go for the movie because the movie is absolutely amazing. For those of you who don't know this book was actually turned into a movie in 2018, a Hindi movie, Bollywood Hindi movie 
and the actress who plays Sehmet is Alia Bhatt. The actor who plays her husband is Vicky Kaushal, who is again a very good actor. Finally guys, I'm coming to the last book of this video which is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. This is not my own copy, I borrowed it from my friend and uh, I read it because I was in mood for some fantasy and I thought why not go ahead and grab this book because uh, it has a really good cover, it's actually a movie adaptation cover. It's actually a young adult fantasy fiction book, uh, it is set in a Welsh island, a fictional Welsh island and uh, what is different, what makes this book different is that the author has used vintage photos, real vintage photos and a lot of these as guidelines, like as props in the novel. So he collected, he used to collect a lot of vintage photos and uh, i have to show you these well one second and so he used to collect all these weird and uh, kind of different vintage photos and he formed the story around it initially he intended it to be a picture book but then after the suggestion of a publisher he decided to continue it as a novel and he wrote this novel around these photos so the basic premise of the book is that there is this guy called jacob who loves his grandfather but his grandfather lives somewhere else and uh, he is kind of peculiar he is slowly and steadily deteriorating after his grandfather dies jacob discovers a set of vintage photos like the ones that i showed you and uh, he's quite curious about these photos also his grandfather used to tell him stories of weird people stories of weird children with different kind of abilities and jacob is kind of curious about discovering this world earlier he used to think that he was just kidding he was just you know telling him fictional tales but now he's kind of open-minded and he wants to figure out what was the secret of the mystery behind these photos and whatever tales his grandfather used to tell him so he goes on this adventure to this welsh fictional island and it is there that he discovers a whole new world so this is the premise of the book i'm not gonna go deeper than this because i think if you are into fantasy you should yourself you know uh maneuver your way into this world into the world of ransom Riggs and miss peregrine's home for peculiar children so this book was turned into a fantasy fiction movie in the year 2016 and the titular character of miss peregrine is played by eva green who's again a very famous actor so it fared really well because against the budget of 100 10 million dollars it actually collected 296 million dollars i have to mug up these figures to tell you so yeah it was a successful movie and i have to see it not yet seen it but yeah i really want to so guys these are the eight book to movie adaptation reads that i read in 2018 i also read a lot of classics which were later translated into movies but as i told you i'm gonna be making a separate video about my classic reads of 2018 so i have not included those in this video as it is already a really long video let me know which were the book to movie adaptation reads that you read in 2018 if you have any recommendation for me about book to movie adaptation books then do tell me and if you enjoyed this video if you like this video please don't forget to hit that like also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already share this video with your friends and family with book lovers whom you think might be interested in watching such content and i'll see you with another video super soon until then bye